Hello, and welcome to FARPOW Device Manager's Site-to-Site -Site VPN Learning Module. This video is part of the mini-series called Cisco FARPOW Device Manager. If you haven't already seen it, please at least take a look at the introduction episode to get an overview of what is FARPOW Device Manager, or FDM. FDM is Cisco's new web-based simplified device manager to manage Cisco's integrated next-gen firewall, or Firepower Threat Defense software offering. In this session, we will look at how to configure Site-to-Site -Site VPN using Firepower Device Manager. A VPN is nothing but a network connection that establishes a secure tunnel between remote peers using a public source, such as an internet, or some other network. VPNs use tunnels to encapsulate data packets within the normal IP packets for forwarding over IP-based networks. They use encryption to ensure privacy and authentication to ensure the integrity of the data. You can create VPN connections to peer devices. All connections are point-to-point, -point, but you can link the device into a larger hub and spoke or mesh VPN topology by configuring all the relevant connections. In 6.1, with FAPA Device Manager, we support only pre-shared keys. However, the support for PKI certificates are coming soon. We use IPsec protocol that protects the data. Now, FDD or FAPA Threat Defense can create a secure VPN tunnel between two FTDs, between an FTD or an, and an ASA, or between an FTD and any third-party firewall. Let's look at a little bit more on what is this IPsec technology. Internet Key Exchange, or what we call IKE, is the key management protocol that is used to authenticate the IPsec peers, negotiate, and distribute IPsec encryption keys and automatically establish IPsec security associations, or what we call the SAs. This IC negotiation comprises of two phases. Phase one negotiates a security association between two IC peers, which enables the peers to communicate securely in phase two. An IC proposal is basically a set of algorithms that two peers use to secure the negotiation between them. IC negotiation begins by each peer agreeing on a common shared IC policy. This policy basically states which security parameters are used to protect subsequent IC negotiations. Now, during phase two of this negotiation, or what we call the quick mode, IKE establishes the essays for other applications, such as IPsec. Both phases use proposals when they negotiate a connection. IKE policy objects define the IKE proposals for these negotiations. The objects that you enable are the ones used when the peers negotiate a VPN connection. You cannot specify different IC policies per connection. IC policies are basically global, which basically means any enabled IC policies are available to all VPN connections. IPsec proposals. The IPsec proposals that we talked about defines a combination of security protocols and algorithms that secure traffic in an IPsec tunnel. There are separate IPsec proposal objects based on the IC version, IC v1 or IC v2. When you create an IC v1 IPsec proposal, you select the mode in which the IPsec operates and define the required encryption and authentication types. You select single options for the algorithms. If you want to support multiple combinations in a VPN, 
you can create and select multiple IPv1 IPsec proposals or their objects. When you create an IPv2 IPsec proposal, you can select all the encryption and hash algorithms allowed in a VPN. The system orders the settings from the most secure to the least secure and negotiates with the peer until a match is found. This allows you to potentially send a single proposal to convey all the allowed combinations instead of the need to send each allowed combination individually as in with the IQ1 V1. Now a maximum of 11 IPsec proposals can be associated to one connection profile and that could be 11 IQ1 and 11 IQ2. By default, the FTD creates a bunch of IQ1 and V2 proposals ready to be used in a connection profile. But in addition, if you would want some more proposals, you can create as many as you want from the objects page. Here is the typical config list of configuration errors that you might hit into um, if your VPN tunnel is not coming up. Some of them, namely, being IQV1 is only enabled on one side, while IQV2 is enabled on the remote side. IQV1 is enabled on both sides, but the pre-shared key is different on the local versus the remote side. When IQV1 is enabled on both sides, either the local and or the remote pre-shared key are incorrect. Incompatibility between IQV1 V2 policies. Incompatibility between IQV1 V2 IPsec proposals that are associated with the connection profile. The perfect forward secrecy is enabled on one side and not on the other. The incorrect remote IP address. The remote peer cannot be reached through the interface selected. The access policies could be restricting traffic between the endpoints. The NAT policies are configured to translate the local remote networks and NAT exempt is not configured. There's an incorrect local or remote network configured. Various reasons that could cause a configuration error. Here is a demo topology that we're going to use today to configure site-to-site -site VPN. Notice on one side on the local network, I have an FTD or Firewall Threat Defense. In the remote side, I have an ASA. And we're going to create a VPN tunnel between the FTD and the ASA. Now in the evaluation mode, one thing to note is only this encryption is available for both policies and proposals. However, in a fully licensed mode, the stronger encryptions will be available. In my scenario, I am using a fully licensed mode. Now also, based on the country, some encryptions may not be available, depending on what you've picked in your licensing. Let's note the demo steps that we'll be following. First, we we'll want to walk through a site-to-site -site VPN wizard which is available within our Firepower Device Manager to set up the connection profile. We'll define the endpoints, the privacy configuration, and if you have NAT exempt or you want to select the free Hellman algorithm for perfect server secrecy, you can do that. For the purpose of this demo, I do not need to do this. Then walking through the wizard will note the summary. This will bring up the tunnel between the FTD and the ASA. We're going to test the reachability towards the remote branch office by pinging the address on the remote host. Use a list of CLI show commands that you can run to check the VPN tunnel. We will run a few of them in the demo as well. With that, let's jump into the demo. So here is our Firepower Device Manager, Device Dashboard. And notice I have three interfaces here, one inside, one outside, and one going to the internet. Notice our routing here, it's mainly static. 
uh, I have one route which is a default and one going to the outside towards the peer gateway to the branch network. Now let's click on our site-to-site -site VPN card here which launches this device summary. When you click on add, it actually walks you through a site-to-site -site VPN wizard. The step one here is to define your endpoints, which means to identify the interface on this device, which would be your local VPN access interface. You can select it from the drop down here based on the objects that you've created. Along with that, you want to specify your remote IP address or the remote peer interface IP address and then define what your local network would be. Again, picking from the drop down here, which you've defined as objects and your remote network. So you're basically identifying your local and remote networks that can use the connection. Traffic between these networks is protected using this privacy configuration, which is the step two. Here you want to select the internet key exchange or IKE policy and enter the pre-shared keys needed to authenticate the VPN connection. Then you also want to select the IPsec proposal. Let's take a look at the IKE policies. Notice there are some created by default within the FTD for both IKE policy and the IPsec proposals. But if you want to add a new IPsec proposal or an IKE policy, you can simply click, click on the create new and create your own IKE IPsec proposals. Once you've done that, you can select it and hit OK. You have some additional options here which I have not used for the demo, but if there is any network that you would like to exempt from that, you want to select that now over here and the uh, private forward secrecy algorithm if you want to select that. On step three, you view the summary of what you've just configured for the VPN and hit finish. And that's it. You have your configuration for site-to-site -site VPN done on the FTD. Don't forget to hit deploy to actually deploy this configuration onto the FTD device. Now while it's deploying, let's quickly go and look at our configuration here on the ASA. I have uh, the IPsec configured on the ASA side, which you can take a look at, as well as the IKE v2 configuration to make sure that it matches. And you can also look at your uh, essays and uh, other IPsec configuration, IKE v1, v2, to make sure there are no essays configured yet. Similarly, once it's deployed, you'll see the similar type of configuration on your FTD. So here is my FTD and I'm running the exactly same commands that I'm used to on the ASA on the FTD. And notice the configuration that was pushed by the Firepower Device Manager onto the device. Similarly, we can also check for the essays on the FTD. Once that's done, let's run a quick check, quick ping test. So let me ping branch, which is my remote network or a remote host from my inside host. I see the pings going through. On the ASA, you'll see I'm seeing ICMP corresponds request and responses coming back from the remote host, which is the 172.16.255.20 and Let's go ahead and check the essays being created on the FTD. Notice we see the essay being created here. You can also check other statuses. 
and let's do the same thing on the ESA to make sure we are looking at the correct connection run the same commands as you're used to the same show commands on both the FTD and the ESA verify that the VPN connection is actually active and that's it thank you for joining me today on this demo for Firepower Device Manager configuring site-to-site -site VPN. And don't forget to be on the lookout for more videos to learn more about Firepower Device Manager. Thank you again.